Hi, I'm Ian Hartman, Solution Architect at Western Computer. And in this short video, we're going to focus on the landed cost module. Do you need to track purchase orders as goods move from the point that you take ownership to the final destination? Do you need to receive the goods at the overseas dock and again at the warehouse? Do you need to capture different costs along the way? Do you need to record invoices from the merchandise vendor as well as the shipper? Have you created workarounds or even written custom code to handle these challenges? Then the landed cost module might be right for you. So this is my landing page. This is where I normally land and I've created a new tile for landing costs. We're going to be working landed costs. We're going to be working from here. The next step is going to be to receive the goods at the warehouse. So all of this is being done from within here. I could do it from within the individual record on the form, or I can do it from the grid. I like working from the grid. So at this point it's saying, okay, here's your full order. What are you receiving? We do our standard that we would normally do for receiving. And at this point it's going through the receiver and we'll look at the inventory and we'll look at the postings when this is done. And all along the way, by the way, inventory was being posted. You're going to see shortly what I mean by that. So if I come back in, I'll show you where we can look at that information really easily is right here on that shipping container. If I go to the transactions, this is what had happened. The goods came out and there's the original PO that purchased it. And then there's the return, the whole in and out of the merchandise. And if I go look at the purchase order, which is opened over here, but I'm going to click on this and I go look at its invoice now and I go look at the vouchers. You'll notice there are transactions now. There's variances and all that. Normal accounting that you would expect. So the final step here is going to be to invoice the shipping vendor. So the shipping vendor could be invoiced a couple of different ways. You can have a PO for it and then hook up that PO. I'm going to just do it right from here. I'm going to click on the shipping vendor, which takes me into the shipping vendor. And I'm going to just create a brand new invoice. So I'm going to create an invoice journal. I'm going to pick the invoice journal. I put in the lines. And just to show you where it gets linked up, I'm probably not going to go through the whole process. We all have an invoice. Up over here under functions, there's the select voyage costs. It opens up a box and you pick your voyage from the box and that's it. Everything gets linked together. So in a nutshell, what we've done is we have taken a PO that was preset. That PO had a vendor that was set up to be a shipping vendor. It had on the water as a terms of delivery, which was toggled for the goods in transit. And it had a warehouse 11 that was a not advanced warehouse warehouse, but it also had a goods in transit and an under delivery warehouse attached to it. In addition to the quarantine and transfer warehouses, we took ownership of the goods. We recorded the vendor's invoice, which did not put any type of accrual and ignored the three way match because it knew that it was picking it up prior to the final delivery at the warehouse. And this could be multiple legs we go through where goods are moved. We added cost to the voyage. Some of it was automatic cost. We then went ahead and added the dates as we knew them and the system kept moving the voyage through. We finally received the goods at the warehouse, which could have used advanced warehousing. And then we recorded the shipper's invoice. So that's it in a nutshell. If there's anything else, that you want to see, I can be reached at ian.hartman at Western Computer. I hope you enjoyed this quick session of landed costs. Thank you for attending. Take care.